Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio with AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over are the top five reasons why an indoor blower motor on an air handler continues and continues to run even though it's supposed to be off. So maybe you have your thermostat set to the off position or it's on heat or cooling, but the thermostat's satisfied. These five reasons could occur on any one of those scenarios, including if the air handler has electric strip heating like this, or the air handler is connected to air conditioning only, or a heat pump. Reason number one is if you have a bad thermostat. So if you have this type of thermostat or you have this type right here, regardless of what type you have, as long as it's 24 volts, you can go ahead and pull the thermostat off of its base right here. And so you're disconnecting the switching assembly, which is in the, in the thermostat. And if when you do this, the blower motor turns off, then you know that this is bad. So as long as you have this to the, say, auto right here instead of on, and this is on the off, and it's just continuing to run, or maybe you have it on cooling, but you see that your temperature in the building is lower than what you're setting it to, the system should not be running. And if you pull this off while the blower motor is running and then it stops, then you know that this is the problem. How the thermostat works is you have 24 volts coming off of this control board on the R right here. It goes into the wire nut and then it comes out and into the thermostat wire to the thermostat somewhere on the, on the interior wall of a building somewhere. And you have your thermostat. And when your thermostat tells the fan to turn on, you have R, which is typically the red wire, and G right here, which is typically your green wire, they touch. And what happens is it sends 24 volts right here to the, the G wire. So then what happens is you have your, your G terminal over here, which is your green wire once again, over at your control board, receives the, the signal. So you have 24 volts over at the G, and that tells the, the blower motor to turn on. Now we're going to get to reason two, which is the actual thermostat wires themselves. So back here, maybe there's a problem where it's stripped at or something, and the R and G are already touching. So they're touching maybe just due to a bad thermostat wire, or maybe there's a staple that's driven uh, and onto this thermostat wire on a piece of wood, and, and they just they nailed it down too hard and squished the wires together. Or maybe there's an actual staple going through this. Literally, just they're trying to mount the thermostat wire where it travels from this air handler to the thermostat somewhere is maybe it's traveling 100 feet and they're just uh, trying to strap it up onto some joists or something like that. Maybe there's a problem there. So you may have to switch this wire out. So if you have an extra wire such as this brown wire right here, you could always switch out that brown wire with the with the G wire. Uh, so that's, a, that's an issue that you could find. And the way to tell if you have that problem is you just take your multimeter and we're going to test for voltage between G and C over here. So if you had power to this air handler and the blower motor was running and you checked between G and C and you did not read 24 volts, then you know that you have some other problem and it's not thermostat or thermostat wire related. If you do have 24 volts here, then you know that you do have a problem with your thermostat wire. So here's an up close view. I just wanted to be able to give this to you. Uh, in a simpler way so you could see it, but the multimeter set on voltage, if you had power to this control board, what you'd check is right here where you had your, your G right there. You could check that, and of course with these alligator clips, you would be wanting to put these on ahead of time so that you're not touching uh, where the, the voltage is going to be at, but you have the one on G, and then you're going to touch this one on to the C, and you're going to see if you're going to read 24 volts. So. If you have 24 volts there, you know you have a problem with your thermostat wire that's traveling to this board, and especially when you have your, your thermostat face off. So you're going to have to replace that wire or switch out the, the G wire. So switch it out here and at the thermostat sub-base with that additional wire. In this case, we had the brown wire. So that's something that you could do. So that brings us to this little box right here, which is reason three. And this box is a relay with contacts on the inside that open and close. And what you have is typically one of the two 120 volt legs that complete the circuit for the blower motor. It comes in right here on this tap. And right here on the common, that goes to the blower motor. And these are normally open. And when you have 24 volts at the G, that starts the timer. And then after the time delay, the contacts close and it applies power to the blower motor. Now what could happen is those contacts could get pitted, uh, they could get welded shut, 
and then they won't come apart again, and that could be a problem. So I wanna show you what some contacts look like underneath these boxes. So this is that little box, and it's cut open, and you can see the contacts on the inside right here. Now, I don't know if you can make it out, but right down in here, it looks kind of burnt. So that's what I mean. When this is normally closed on this side, but then you're powering your blower motor, and when this sucks in, your blower motor turns on, there's a lot of amperage drawn across those contacts, and that could be the problem. So you could just have this stuck there like that. Reason number four could be a bad sequencer with burnt contacts that are welded shut. So this one happens to be a two-level sequencer, and these two contacts are supposed to be normally open, and these two contacts are supposed to be normally open, and they only close after a time delay after powering the pan heater on the bottom with 24 volts. Once the pan heater heats up, it flexes a bimetal disc and allows the contacts inside of the sequencer to close. But when you take the 24 volts off of the bottom of the sequencer, then after your time delay, those contacts are supposed to be opening back up again. Well, in this case, they're burnt together. So as you can see, we have one wire connected to one contact, uh, and that's coming from your breaker. So you have one of the two 120 volt legs for your blower motor right here. And if these contacts are together, well, you see this one right here, this black wire goes up to your thermal limit and over to your electric resistance strip heater. So that will be powering this bottom electric strip heater. But also you see this other wire right here, this one is going right here through your connector and to the, the bottom of this little block right here. Now what we know about that is that that one is the normally closed contact. So if you remember right here, this is normally closed, and then this one, your common, is typically where you have your, your blower motor uh, wire connected to. And so if these two are closed, and you have 120 volts here, uh, because this one is welded together, then you're going to have your blower motor running and your electric resistance running. So I'm going to take you up for an up-close image of this sequencer so you can see how it looks like uh, on the inside when you have burnt contacts. So right here, you see I took the top cover off, and you can see a little black right there. And that's because those are burnt. And you see we're connected to here and here, and our multimeter is reading the resistance value across the contact. And so this is with the power off the air handler, the wires disconnected, you can read a resistance value across contacts. And if you read any resistance at all between those two, such as in this case 4.3, or if you read 0.0, .0 or anything like that, then those contacts are, are burnt together. These should be open. We should be reading OL on this. So that means open line or over limit, but we are reading 4.3 ohms of resistance. So on the inside of here, you see that there's a little rod. And that rod's coming from the, the bottom at the pan heater and the uh, little bimetal disc. So right here, you see that we are reading OL on that contact. So that's what it should be like. So if I was to press down on this, then you see that our resistance value goes to 0.0. .0. But that's what it should be like. It should be popped up so that you have no resistance value whatsoever, just OL. But if you want to learn more about the sequencer, check that out in the description section below. Reason number five could be that the air handler control board does not have one of those black relay boxes, but it just has a wiring harness connected to the blower motor. That means that you have an ECM blower motor instead of a PSC blower motor that has a capacitor like this one right here. So I'm going to show you what an ECM blower motor looks like that's not turning off even though the control board is no longer sending the signal. So here we have an ECM variable speed blower motor and it's live with its high voltage wires all the time and it's just waiting for a signal from the, in this case, a 16 pin connector in order to turn on and to run at whatever particular volume that the control board tells it to. So this module right here, this is a back part, this is the uh, controlling mechanism and then you have your, it's actually a three phase motor up here even though this is just powered by a standard 240 volts for an air handler. So this is a uh, Gentech 2.3 since it has a 16 pin connector and we also have troubleshooting videos down in the description section below for that. We also have troubleshooting videos for the X13 and also the 3.0. So this is live all the time with its high voltage and it's just waiting for the signal to turn on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect it at this block right here just so you can visually see that we are not sending a signal for it to continue to run. Here we go. So now it's running and I'll go ahead and disconnect this and it should stop and you see that it's not.
Now the only way to turn this off now is just to turn the main power off. So if this is the problem that you're having where the blower motor stays off if you turn the power off and then you turn it back on and the blower motor stops running but then you go to use the blower motor such as for heat, for air conditioning, or for fan and when the thermostat's satisfied it just continues and continues to run that's a problem with the module on one of these ECM blower motors. So that's the five reasons and if you have other reasons that you'd like everybody to know put them in the comment section below and also check out our website where we have articles so we have new articles there at least once a week join us over on Facebook and follow us there and like our page we have quick tips happening every other day and so we've got a lot going on with our videos our articles and our quick tips make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning paperback workbook and quick cards which are all available over at amazon.com and we have all those products available over at our website as well including the ebook and we also have the ebook available over on google play make sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification in order to get an update anytime we post a new video hope you enjoyed yourself and we'll see you next time at ac service tech channel